Hi, my name is Elizabeth Campbell and I'm with Next Up Edmonton and I have the pleasure of speaking with Colleen Fuller today. So Colleen is a health policy researcher, consultant and writer. Welcome Colleen. Thank you. Um, so first off, Colleen, can you tell us a bit more about uh, your work? Yes, I um, work, as, as you mentioned, as a health policy researcher and writer. I work, and I also consider myself to be an activist. I work with the BC Health Coalition, the Canadian Health Coalition, um, a number of organizations, the, um, the um, um, Women in Health Protection and the Canadian Center for Policy Alternatives. <laughs> I'm just like an organizational person. Um, and but my focus is definitely on health policy and pharmaceutical policy in Canada and I've uh, published a lot of material and and books and and uh, and I do uh, quite a lot of public speaking great thank you so in terms of policy um, can you please talk a little bit more about some of the strengths of having policies in place and some of the limitations as well um, well it's hard to uh, describe what some of the limitations would be when we live in a kind of a policy light environment in healthcare. Um, but I can tell you what some of the strengths are. Um, policy in healthcare, uh, particularly, should be based on a number of things. One is the best available evidence, and the other is a very strong foundation, uh, moral and ethical foundation. Uh, because access to health care is, is not just a, a question of the best evidence. If you have access to health care, that supports your health better than mm -hmm. not having access to health care. Um, there is a, a very strong and powerful moral argument in favor of creating an, this, uh, um, creating a, um, a very strong sort of central ethic of equity and, and justice in, in terms of health care. And a lot of our policies um, are based on neither of these things. Mm. They are not based on the best available evidence that, um, you know, universal Medicare is much better at meeting, um, you know, overall public health um, objectives, that it is more cost effective, it is more sustainable than a for-profit private system and so forth and so on. Um, a lot of our policies are, are kind of weak in that area and really need to be strengthened in Canada. And if they were strengthened, they would be pushing out, really, um, private corporations that are trying to get involved in the Canadian healthcare system. They would be limiting really, really severely limiting the role of the private insurance industry um, in areas like long-term care, um, pharmaceuticals, and so forth and so on. So we, we actually are, are, in a sense, going in the opposite direction. There's a relationship between these evidence-based policies, of course, and, and the sort of moral foundation of, of um, health care in regard to equity and, and so forth. So there's a relationship between those two things. Excuse me. Um, so, in terms of weakness, um, um, I'm not sure exactly what you meant by that, like a weak, what is a weak, the weakness of policy? Or, or I guess policies in Canada or in the Alberta context. Right. So you kind of touched on some of the things you'd like to see in those policies. Yeah. So that touches a bit on yeah. some of the limitations of our current policies. Yeah. Ironically, one of the areas that is kind of challenging for healthcare activists right now has to do with um, because uh, there has been an obviously increased role for for-profit companies mm -hmm. in Canada. This uh, is essentially uh, the private sector in healthcare. In that area of healthcare, is pretty unregulated. We don't have a strong regulatory framework to govern private corporations delivering surgical services, for example. And the, a big debate in healthcare right now amongst activists is do we demand regulations which basically legitimizes the role of these companies mm -hmm. or do we do something else which is to um, base, basically put, put, push them out of the healthcare system altogether. So it, it's kind of a dilemma, and, um, but uh, it, it, is, it is an area that is completely policy free. Um, or almost completely policy-free, and in every province. So it's, it's, um, 
I don't have the answers to it. Actually, yeah. I do. I, for myself, I think that we should push them out, but, mm -hmm. but it's a debate. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how does all of um, your work uh, relate to the theme of the conference? What are some of your main messages from the conference? Well, uh, what I was talking about yesterday was um, the emergence in Canada of two things. One is a culture of individual rights and consumer choice that um, in a, for a universal health care system, this is a dilemma because mm -hmm. the health care, universal health care is based on social solidarity and a, a principle of collective entitlement, not personal entitlement, but collective entitlement. Um, so individual rights, which is something that is being reinforced through the Charter of Rights um, and through a number of court cases um, that are now in BC, Alberta, and Ontario, are basically are arguing, these court cases are arguing that, that uh, patients have a right to spend their own money to get help to get the health health care that they need and this is a real challenge for the um, health care system a universal health care system on the other side of that coin is the issue of corporate rights and corporate rights have been entrenched um, in a number of different ways but but uh, encoded and really entrenched through uh, uh, trade agreements international trade agreements in Canada that began in 1987 three years after the Canada Health Act was passed. And so that has shaped the way that we are interpreting uh, Medicare legislation mm -hmm. and, and also how we apply it, and, uh, which is one of the reasons we're seeing some of these things happening now with the emergence of more private providers, for-profit providers who want access to both the public dollar, the private dollar, your dollar, my dollar, everybody's dollar, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and they and they have, um, they have a very, very powerful mm -hmm. tool to obtain those rights, and that's, uh, the, those are the free trade agreements. So that's what I was talking about yesterday and what we need to um, think about in terms of challenging some of them. Great. Well, thank you so much, Colleen. Thank You're you welcome. for sharing your uh, knowledge and insights thank with you. me today. Thank you very much.